She was not the only one who nearly led police to the body the night last July when the toddler was reported missing. We're now learning Ruben Ebron led police to a place not that far from where he dumped the body until Ebron then changed his mind about cooperating in the investigation. Tonight, we're also sifting through never-before-heard jailhouse phone calls between Ebron and Lana Barton just days after her son was reported missing. Channel 4's Francesca Amaker has been listening to those calls and going through hundreds of pages of documents. She's joining us live from Bayard. Francesca. Mm -hmm. Well, we found out a lot tonight. Actually, you're about to hear in one minute, you're going to hear the jailhouse phone calls between Lana Barton and Ruben Ebron, and you're going to hear some eerie silence, about 10 seconds of silence, where you almost feel like Ebron could have revealed something to Lana in that time. Also, we're visiting the neighborhood where Lonzi's sister brought investigators, and this is the area where she mentioned that dinosaur. And the big question is, if this information would have been made public sooner, would we have found Lonzi's Barton, Lonzi Barton's body? According to new documents released to News for Jax, Ruben Ebron wasn't the only one who nearly led investigators to the body of Lonzi Barden the night he went missing. The documents show the sister of Lonzi Barden also tried leading investigators to the boy's body, but could only articulate so much. In these documents, the girl went back and forth on where Ruben drove that night. She told police, the truth is, my little brother got kidnapped. I left him in the car all alone. It's my fault. She ended by telling police to check the woods and look near the blue house, the green house, and purple and pink houses. We visited the Bayard area where we saw those colorful houses. There we met up with our crime and safety analyst, Gil Smith, who revealed the girl also told police something else. I learned from a couple of different sources that at one point, Lonzi's sister said that um, they came into this area and she identified it because she said there was a dinosaur in the yard and also a lit fountain. And though the lit fountain is not there today, we learned from the owners that a fountain sat next to this rare dinosaur just six months ago. I think if she told the police and the police be here down the street a lot, they should have knew to come in this area and search. And I mean, they, the dinosaur, it's been here over five, six years. The owners tell us police were in the area just days after Lonzi went missing. But there wasn't much activity until last month when Ebron led police to Lonzi's body. Wednesday evening, News for Jax obtained one of the calls made just days after Ebron's initial arrest. It was between him and Lonzi's mother, Lana Barden. They just feel like you're withholding on where he is. That's what, they, that's what they keep telling me, is that he know he can tell us where he is and he won't. You believe that? I believe that you would give me my baby. <laughs> it's just like I told him, you know, why the f*** would he hurt? You know, my baby when we finna get married. Now, coming up at 11 o'clock, we're hearing from a local child psychologist who brings us into the mind of the sister of Lonzi Barton. What is she thinking? What is she going through? And what type of toll has this taken on her? He also reveals if it's possible that she could be cured of all of this trauma. That's coming up new at 11. I'm live in Bayard, Francesca Emmerich, Channel 4, the local station.